The following program features content documenting my legal cannabis grow under Canada's Access to Cannabis for Medical Purposes Regulation Act. 613 Grow With Me does not endorse illegal or harmful activities in any way. The content in this video is created for documentary and educational purposes only. If you're not 18 or older, please unsubscribe and do not watch this content. It's the taste sensation that's turned round the nation. Tetley brings you round. Okay guys, so we're going to make a, uh, a flowering tea. So if you saw my last video, we uh, switched everything over into flower. Um, in order to reawaken up all the, mac uh, the uh, microbacterial life in my soil, I like to make a tea and brew it up and it's kind of like an instant dose full of microbes when you're growing organically. Um, it's important to feed your microbes and keep the soil going. So my tap water to start off, as you can see, is a pH of 7.6. That's a little high. Typically it's around 8, 8.5, but I had a bit of pH down in it. Uh, this stuff here is pH down. It's just a really strong acid, and it brings the pH down. Um, a little tiny, tiny little driplet is enough to get it down uh, into the range that I want, which is anywhere from 6.5 to 6.9, somewhere around there. Um, I noticed 6.5 to 6.8 is about the sweet spot. <clears throat> Excuse me, but everything from five and a half up should be fine. Um, ideally though, you do want to keep it in the six and up range or 6.2 and up. Um, they say that it's better for the, mi the uh, microbial life and that it protects it from dying. If it gets too acidic, they can die. So there we go, nailed it 6.5 and that's perfect. So I like to start off with nice 6.5 pH water. Uh, and then I start off, um, or pardon me, after that I get my earthworm castings. So this particular tea, I'm gonna use uh, earthworm castings rather than compost as the main, um, the main source of, uh, of nutrients. Uh, worm castings are great for cannabis. Uh, and I prefer it to manure um, a little easier to work with and it doesn't stink as much a lot of people make their tea in a tea bag or like a really gigantic uh, you know sack or, or old t-shirt or cheesecloth or whatever I'm kind of a savage I like to just throw all my shit in a bucket um, for a couple of reasons primarily because I'm lazy and I just don't feel like finding my uh, my uh, my tea bags they're around there somewhere uh, and secondary to that, um, apparently the microbes work better if you don't uh, have them in a bag. Uh, after that, we put in 277, which is very similar to Gaia Green's um, flowering 284 nutrient. This one here is from UCAN, also a Gaia Green product, and it's called Abundant Bloom. It's the same as the 284, but it's 277, uh, and it's formulated specifically for cannabis. They have their own bloom formula. Uh, that's it there. And then instead of the all-purpose 444, um, they have their version uh, of that as well. I can't recall what it is at the moment, but I believe it's also, it's it's something like 554. It's, it's a little different. Uh, so what I did is I put two cups of earthworm castings as my base, and then I put a cup of everything else. Okay, so we got a cup of the flowering nutrient in there, the 284, so mostly eight. And then I got the uh, the kelp meal out, and that's uh, 102, so it's it's a little high on the uh, potassium, the K side of things, uh, which is great. That's what we want is potassium. I don't know what the deal is with the fish stuff lately. I seem to be really bent on the kelp uh, and all the fish kind of things. <clears throat> it works really good though, crustaceans as well. Uh, and we're trying to shy away from high uh, nitrogen. Because we're in flour, uh, we want to nail it with all of the higher phosphate and, uh, and uh, higher potassium stuff. So this here is mineral mineralized phosphate, so obviously it's going to be high in phosphate because it's phosphate. Uh, it's 090, the middle one, so I put a cup of that in as well. I'm using a half cup, so I just put two half cups of everything in. Uh, some people ferment corn seeds and grind up all kinds of bullshit and make their teas super complicated. 
There's all kinds of different recipes and shit online that you can use. Um, Gaia Green pretty much nails it with all of their, uh, you know, pre-made 444, 284 and all that stuff. So it's pretty awesome. And then I also got some Bokashi Plus. Um, this shit here, it's supposed to turn your food scraps uh, and like dog waste and, and things like that. Uh, into valuable compost, um, it, it stinks like a bastard. It's basically just rye, barley, molasses, and a couple other things. It just breaks down and ferments all the bad bacteria, and it creates a good colonization of bacteria uh, for your compost heap. And it's great if you have an outdoor garden. I don't have one anymore, and this is just sitting around, so I figure if it's good for, um, you know, inoculating microbacteria, I figure it should work in here. So I dumped a good helping of that shit in there as well. And that's pretty much it. Um, after that, you just have to grab... Oh, actually, no, pardon me. Uh, one other thing that you want to get is molasses. I use molasses as my sugar or my base for my food. Um, this one here is the Co uh, Crosby brand. Okay, it says fancy molasses because it's fancy. Um, get one that's unsulfured. I know that this one's unsulfured and it's the one that a lot of the lads use there. Uh, so I got this one. Apparently, I guess the sulfured version sulfur isn't good for your microbes and it kind of fucks them up. So just use unsulfured molasses. And if you're not sure, buy one that says unsulfured. Uh, then some people go with a tablespoon of molasses per, per feed. Some people go with two, three tablespoons. Um, to be honest, I just didn't want to have this in my fridge anymore, so I just squeezed the shit out of it, and there was a lot more in there than I thought, which is fine, because I just, you know, that's, it just, I just wound up giving it more food, so more food's okay. Um, I imagine there is a diminishing point of returns, and it's probably not going to help after a certain while, but that's fine. So, I'm going to say we probably got at least a quarter, if not even a third of a cup of molasses in there. Okay, then you get your little spoon out, you give her a little stir, and holy fuck does that shit stink. Wow, it really smells, man. It, feels, it smells like armpits and fish assholes, and it's just, it's fucking reeks. Growing organically is awesome, but you're using a bunch of live organic stinky shit, so it stinks. Okay, after it's stirred up, stirred up well, you bust out your, uh, your air stone. Now, I have this air pump I use for my hydro system. It's super overkill and you really don't need one with, with six leads. Um, it's the only one I have, so it's fine. I just plugged in one of them, okay, and the other ones are free. Uh, and then you take your air stone and you just drop it in. And what'll happen is when you oxygenate the tea, okay, the microbes become alive because of the oxygen or rather stay alive and they break down the sugar so if any of you are like dirty hippies and you make kombucha it's the same idea man when you put your 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 scoby in with the kombucha and it eats all the sugar it's the same idea except in this case the oxygen uh and the, is what feeds the microbes and the microbes the same as a a scoby um it, which is a symbiotic culture of bacteria eats them all up and then you're good to go. So that's it, man. Stay tuned for next time. And we're going to come back in 36 hours and we'll take a look at the tea and we'll see where we're at.